This is good. This is good. This is really good. This is good. This is bad. I'm Matt, you're watching A Book Life, and this is the BMW 1 Series. I've just driven this new BMW 1 Series all the way down to Corsica, and after three months of ownership, I thought it'd be a good time to review it. This is the 118i M Sport. The 1 Series is BMW's small family car. Take a look at the outside. Styling wise, I think this little BMW is pretty good looking. I really like this M Sport bumper. It's nice and aggressive and looks super sporty. The M Sport pack gives you front and rear parking sensors. One downside is this top piece of the bumper doesn't feel like it's fitted very well. Nice little air intakes. These ones actually are real. Nice little boot spoiler. Wing mirrors give you plenty of visibility. The M Sport comes with blacked out windows. Really good for little man in the back. These BMW LED lights are super bright. The rear end is nice and wide and looks planted on the road. There are these fake vents, which I don't love but I do like the rear diffuser and also the large rear exhaust looks nice and sporty. Five spoke M Sport wheels. Some of this gloss black on the outside does look very fingerprinty. I love this body contour and I have to say the quality of the paintwork is really good. White is not my favorite color but for not showing scratches and chips white is a winner. Overall this is a sporty looking hatchback. Now I've had a look outside let's have a look inside and I'll start with the boot because this is the part of the car that I was most surprised with. No auto lift boot function on this. You can pop it on the key, but you do have to open it by hand. This one series boot space has 370 liters of capacity. And actually it's much bigger than you think because what you can do is you can lift up this flap here, clip it back, and you've immediately got an extra 150, 200 mil of depth underneath you also get a tidy little storage net to the side and you also get some extra storage underneath the locking mechanism there's a handy warning triangle kept in the boot lid it's only got 130 liters less boot space than a 3 series which isn't bad and you can fit more than you think in there if you're clever with your packing we've come all the way down to Corsica in it last year we did it in the 5 series touring we've managed to do it that's two adults, one dog, one little man. Right, let's have a look inside. First thing you notice when you get into the new One Series is how modern and how well put together this vehicle feels. All of the plastics feel really well made from the door cards, up to the dash, down to the center console. Everything feels really good. There's no cheap plastics in here. The only thing I'm not keen on is piano black. It's not that I don't like the way it looks, it just can be prone to looking dirty and scratching easily. The steering wheel is leather, driver focused. I like the shape of it. It's nice and thin. It's not too thick. Some of the BMW steering wheels have tended to get a little bit thicker recently, but this one's nice. It feels comfortable in in any driving position. This one also comes with cruise control and a limiter. That's an absolute must for me. I can't drive a car without cruise control, especially if you're doing long distance. Few buttons on there which control the infotainment system. The driver's display itself is good. Very clear, very easy to see, very easy to clean. You can cycle through the screen to give you all of your driver information. The sat nav information also comes up on there as well. The seats are very comfortable. Stepping out of a five series into this one series, I did wonder whether whether the seats wouldn't be as comfortable, but I have to say after driving it all the way down to the south of France, they're actually really comfortable. They've got electronic adjustment, so you can change the lumbar support. Folding wing mirrors on the key. One, two, three, four bottle holders in the front. The bottle holders in the door hold nice big beakers. These ones hold a coffee happily. 
Here you've got storage for your phone and glasses. I also really like to store my phone up behind the infotainment system. This one's got auto windscreen wipers and auto lights. Infotainment system is easy to use and very intuitive. It also comes with Apple CarPlay. All of this is controlled from the iDrive wheel down here. I really like this system. It's the same as the 5 Series and I really just find it easy to use. This is also touchscreen. One annoying problem I have noticed with the iDrive system is that when you're using Google Map, during critical points of the journey down here, it did decide to freeze. The driver aids button is here and I do find these a little bit annoying so I just tend to turn them off. The lane assist has actually nearly made me crash as opposed to saving my life. One time I was just trying to nip round a parked car and it tried to pull me back in line and I nearly clipped this car. Here you've got a 12 volt port as well as one normal USB socket. You've also got one micro USB in the center console. The center console isn't massive, but you can store plenty in there. It's also quite comfy when you're driving along. In the back, you've got two sets of ISOFIX points, so you can fit two child chairs in there. I have to say, with those two child chairs in there, I think it would be a bit of a squeeze to get somebody in the middle. In the back, I can just about fit behind my driving position. I'm six foot, 182 centimeters, and there's just enough room back here for me. I wouldn't want to drive a long distance sat here, but for kids or someone a little bit smaller, it wouldn't be a problem. There's a nice bit of blue LED lighting on all the door cards. One thing that's not great in this car is the lighting at night. If you need to see something, if you need to stop and do something in the car, the lighting isn't very good. One great thing in the back are these micro USB ports. You get not one, but two of them, which is really handy for charging up devices. Again, in the rear, you get plenty of storage in the back, one bottle holder and a little pocket there, and some netting as well. Let's talk about MPG. The average for this vehicle is 34.2 MPG. On the way down, when we were traveling at 70 miles an hour, we averaged about 49 MPG. Right, let's take it for a drive and see how she handles. Okay, on the road testing. This car has surprised me so much. I was not expecting it to be a great drive. I wasn't expecting it to be a fun drive, but it has literally coped with everything that we've thrown at it so far. On the motorway, super quiet, super comfy. That build quality coming through, it's not hard to drive long distances. I was a little bit skeptical. I thought, oh, compared to the 5 Series, it's gonna be a little bit more tiring when it comes to doing some of the longer days of driving through France. I cannot fault it whatsoever. In fact, once you're inside the car, you can't really tell that you're in a, a 1 Series compared to a 5 Series. Yeah, there's a little bit less width to the car, but apart from that, it is as comfy as the 5 Series. When you come off the motorway and you stick it in sports mode, it stiffens up the steering, quickens up the throttle, and it becomes such a playful little car to drive round. I'm on these mountain roads of Corsica at the moment, I couldn't wish for a better car. It's so fun, it's so nimble. It feels planted on the road. The suspension feels surprisingly firm. It doesn't roll around the corners. Its brakes feel good. It accelerates well. And it doesn't sound too bad either. Yes, do I wish I had an M2? Yes, do I wish I had an M340i touring or just a standard saloon? But, needs must at the moment. We're doing the van build project. We needed to sell the 5 Series to fund that. And I'm so surprisingly happy with this little 1 Series M Sport. As this one is a manual, I have got a little bit of a complaint with this. The reverse and first gear 
feel pretty awful. Reverse has this ability, one moment to feel like I need to force it into reverse, yet the next moment I feel like I've accidentally stuck it in reverse from first. It can't make up its mind. Once you're through into second gear though, it feels good. Okay, quick pros and cons then. Pros, aesthetically it's a good looking hatchback, looks nice and sporty. Think it's a better looking hatchback than its competitors. It cruises well on the motorway, but then you can jump onto a few mountain roads and have a blast. This is good. It's also super comfy and comes with a decent level of technology. Last pro is the overall build quality. Cons then, there's no rear view camera, which is a must on cars these days. This is bad. But apart from that, this is a great car. Overall, if you're looking for a small family hatchback that is fun to drive, this BMW 1 Series is the car for you. If you've liked this video, give it a thumbs up. And if you want to subscribe and help me reach my target of 500 subscribers, that would be great. Thanks for watching.